Good morning everyone and welcome to the Two-Headed World Gaming Channel as we are taking an early access view at Total War Pharaoh. This is my first experience with the game as I've been on a mission for the last few months to avoid as many spoilers as I could. Avoiding most of the dev diaries, just scanning them for information about a possible release date, maybe some features that might be expected, we might be expected to find within the game, and I'm happy to say that up to this point, I've been mostly successful in that mission. So this is a fresh look at the game for me, and hopefully for you as well, or we'll be exploring it together. So go ahead, grab yourself a cup of coffee, a cup of tea, or whatever you prefer to drink, and let's get into the game. Just so you know, the way that I'm going to go into this game is mostly exploring. I'm going into it with curiosity. I want to see what's available. I want to see how it looks. I want to see how it feels. What features have they brought in from other games? Maybe they've put in something new. I'm not really going to talk about whether it's worth it uh, price-wise, mostly because I already bought the game in order to have this kind of early access and share it with you guys, so I'm already invested in it. I've been also a fan, as you see on the channel, of Total War Fronts of Britannia and Troy, so yeah, take that information and do with it what you, what you like, form your own opinion about it. So, we'll be exploring the game and... I'll let you figure it out whether it feels like a good investment for you and something that you might want to get in the following months uh, at Christmas or whatnot. Okay, great. Well, I've been looking through the options and did a few benchmark tests on these settings and I am happy to say that so far it worked surprisingly well. Hope the performance holds up uh, throughout the campaign as well. So. Uh, fingers crossed that that's going to work also and it's going to stay stable. There are a few tutorials here which seem interesting. Most of them I don't care for. I feel like I know how it works. Minor settlements. This I don't think I know how it works. But I decided to figure out within the game. I might make a few mistakes but I feel like it's more interesting that way. We're gonna go into the new game. During this early access we have 60 turns to play with... Ramses from the Egyptians and from the Hittite with Tupiluluma. I think I pronounced that correctly. So these are the two campaigns that are available for us until the full release. We'll start with Ramses. Seems like the basic experience of this Total War game. Ramses the Paragon. Driven by reckless ambition, Ramses sees himself as the chosen of the gods, destined to rule as Pharaoh. Thus, he is well suited for forging ahead at full speed, achieving swift victories on his path to one day claiming Egypt's throne. Starting situation, easy. My greatness will eclipse all. Okay, campaign difficulty and battle difficulty will stay on normal, mostly because I, I want to explore as much as possible. We have a limited amount of turns, that is 60, so... A balanced game seems okay. There's also campaign customization. There's a lot that you can do over here. You can adjust the campaign the way that you want it. And yeah, we're gonna look at it at some point in the future for now. I, I am not gonna <laughs> waste any time in these menus. What do we have to work with? Well, local deities seems to be raw. Exalted beings, your skin ripples with light, your soul clear as the winding waterway where Ra sails. Okay, we have a bunch of units here, plenty of units to go around. We're not gonna go through them, but we are going to look through the faction buildings just because I want to try to figure out some early information. So, Necropolis of the Honored Dead, Happiness plus 6 in the province, plus 2 to influence, plus 2 to happiness and inf plus 6 to influence in the adjacent provinces. Okay, it seems like we have the resources that we've seen in Total War Troy, which is wood, gold, stone, and 5, I'm guessing that's that, that is 5 population for the basic building. Then we have wine markets over here, happiness workforce growth and production okay so i'm guessing influence will be giving us resources once we reach maybe 60 percent 
of our own influence, we will get more resources like we have in Troy. Happiness provides stability. Workforce growth. So yeah, that is workforce. That is the population as I thought it would be. Magi headquarters unlocks Magi units for your command. Plus one Magi units gain from command. We've seen some of these Magi in Total War Troy. The campaign that we are doing now with Memnon. Military Academy, recruitment slots, recruitment ranks, great experience per turn in this province. Okay, so it's also training your troops in the province and recruitment rank plus six. Hmm, okay, well, let's start it. I am Menepta. No, I am the great Pharaoh Menepta. Ten years ago, I inherited the throne in the shadow of my father. The strong bull, the protector of Egypt, the chosen of Ra and beloved of Amun, the mighty pharaoh, Ramses the second. Egypt has flourished throughout my reign, but now I sense the eyes of Set upon me, and dark times are coming. will happen to my kingdom after my soul slips into the eternal lands of the afterlife. Okay. I like the artwork. The video has a more exaggerated animation to it. But I think I could come to love it. I mean, the, the beginning part was... It, it felt a bit exaggerated, right? With the whole thing. It exaggerated for emotion or for storytelling. But as things went along, I, I like the direction in which it went. I don't know. I feel like I, I could go around and start enjoying it. Let's see. But this artwork in the background it looks absolutely beautiful. I love it. Egypt and its old men. Their fingertips are cold with sluggish blood. Their cold cannot hide their lines. My father tells me to honor the bloodline. 
respect the rules of succession. Setei, ha. The Nile ebbs and flows, dynasties end, others begin. This one is spent, the world needs another. The 19th the dynasty began with the Ramses, and so shall the 20th. I will do it with my lock of youth untouched. As I take up the tenfold crown, so shall my lock finally fall. Narrator. When my father Ramses yes. II reconquered the Sinai Peninsula, he made two things clear. First, our empire is built upon the stone and bronze found there. And second, we must never let it slip from our grasp again. Ramses, son of Setnacht, is yet to cut his lock of youth. Yet his martial skill and leadership surpass that of men twice his age. He guards the Sinai Peninsula at my behest, leading his loyal Magi against all who would threaten our people. One such threat descends from the north where the rebellious Canaanites are a constant thorn in my side. However, Ramses has stamped out their defiance at every turn. He accrues victories with ease, and his pride grows with every triumph. Such arrogance is not unfounded. The boy has wreathed himself in glory, anointing his kopesh in the blood of Egypt's enemies. Yet, I worry for the royalty that runs in his veins. When he inevitably seeks the throne of Egypt, will the gods help him grasp it? He claims to bear divine favor, and even I cannot deny an air of destiny surrounds him. Perhaps the gods call on young Ramses to match the greatness of his namesake, and one day roll over all of Egypt Ramses, I'm sure, believes so. Okay. So here we are. Let me lower the sound here. So far, so good. Uh, I... Excitement starts to build up. Let's see. So, what do we have? Strengths and weaknesses unique to your faction. Action buildings, major source of happiness, major source of higher tier units, unique buildings only in province capitals. Okay, so only in province capitals we need we get these unique buildings. Faction units, elite and powerful, excels at both melee and range combat, but small unit sizes. Okay, good to know. Quality over quantity. Commands, armies attack in march stance. Train magi units quickly. As Ramses, you can command your armies to attack in march stance with no penalty to stamina. Is that like a force march? I'm guessing that that is the case. Okay, interesting. On Shemsu Hor, your faction will train Magi to use in any of your armies. Construct recruitment building to increase the number and quality of the trained Magi. Okay, interesting. And then we have a court. Two court actions per turn. Suggest as position first commander. So what is this? And this is the way we're gonna play this first uh, campaign and probably the second one too, where we're really exploring and going into every content, every piece of content, buildings, things like that. This is what I wanted to see when I was watching other people do Let's Plays, so that's what I'm going to explore as well. Hopefully uh, you like this part as well. If you have any suggestions, let me know. Court. The court is the most significant governing body in your land. It is headed by its supreme ruler, Pharaoh for Egypt, the great king of Forhati. The position of the court grant bonuses and abilities to the faction character that holds them. So, we've seen this before. I think it plays similarly to what we have with Agamemnon in Troy, or maybe the Empire in Total War Warhammer, maybe, something like that. Each turn you are given court actions, which can be used on intrigues, requests, and plots. Use them to build up regard with position holders and to obtain a position for yourself. Some court actions cost gold. Very interesting. 
As Ramses, you have two court actions per turn, while other factions only have one, so we have a bonus there. That means you effectively accomplish twice as much in the court, gain renown quickly, use multiple requests or spin plots with the highest chances of success. Having more court actions also allows you to react to plots against you. If you learn about one, you can use gossip to find out who is plotting, then use this courage to remove the plot without paying gold. Very, very interesting. Right click to redirect uh, to court in the encyclopedia. Okay, so we have uh, one built within the game, great. Key concepts, outposts. An outpost is a building outside a region settlement. Constructed in predefined locations, your armies can visit your outposts to receive bonuses for a few turns. Enemy outposts can be sacked by your armies for resources. Ooh! Most outposts cost stone and wood but no workforce. Good. Advice for your factions. As Ramses, you start with two outposts, a shrine of Ra and a waystone both in Nekel. It sounds a lot like what we had in the Total War Saga Thrones of Britannia with smaller villages but having specific roles. That, would, that is great. That is something that I like. The Shrine of Rai improves recruitment of chariots. Pray there to the reduce fatigue in battle of all the respective army's units for a few turns. Okay. The way station prevents attrition and increases influence. Supply your army there to increase its movement for a few turns. Worshipping Ra, divine worship is a source of powerful advantages. Choose a god to worship, then construct a shrine, outposts, or temples in your settlement to gain favor. Send armies to pray at your shrines to receive bonuses for a few turns. Select a general to devote to the god and receive permanent bonuses. Higher tiers of favor provide more powerful bonuses. This seems like the god mechanic, okay, we have in Troy. Advice for your faction, as Ram says you can construct shrines for all Egyptian gods more easily. Shrine of Ra improves chariot recruitment and increases workforce for their province. Place them somewhere you can recruit chariots. Ra's prayers reduce fatigue for the army's units, the devoted general's army has higher armor, and their chariots have more powerful charge. Rain and weather. Yeah, there are sandstorm, there are a few weather effects, I'm guessing this will see in battle. Native units. You start in Sinai, so in this region we have the Shasu, though low tier, are well-rounded warriors, cheap to hire and maintain, use them to protect your stronger units from being flanked. Okay. The Habiru have many units that can deploy close to the enemy lines. Hide them in forests or tall grass, then use them for surprise attack. Good. Titles. Each character is defined by their traits, competencies, and titles. Traits are granted to the character as a result of their actions in battle and on the campaign map. A general's competencies increase with each rank gain. Specific titles are unlocked by various levels, combinations of competencies. Ooh, okay, so we can combine competencies. As Ramses. Your selection of titles allows your general to specialize in various types of units, such as Magi, Sheridan, or Chariots. Equipment. As Ramses, we start with a bow and light armor. Hit the bow. Keep your bodyguard units away from melee and have them shoot down enemies at range. Okay, so we do have a general's bodyguard from what it seems. Legitimacy strengthens your claim to the throne of your chosen royal tradition. It is gained by owning sacred lands, building monuments and winning battles. As soon as your legitimacy value is close to that of the supreme ruler, you can contest the crown, which will put you at war with them. Okay, so that's a, that's sort of the end game. To, to get the crown. Hopefully... Hopefully it doesn't trigger a mass realm divide like we've seen in past in the early game Total War games, right? Like Total War Shogun. I really hated the realm divide having the whole world declare war on you. Hopefully that's not the case. Or at least I like the realm divide as long as your vassals and your allies stay with you. Because I feel like the realm divide whether the even your vassals and even your allies 
break off all of a sudden, uh, that's not fun. Your goal is to amass more legitimacy than them before the war ends after a certain number of turns. Becoming Supreme Ruler grants special ancillaries and royal powers such as forced annexation and growth migration. Okay. It seems like they've inspired themselves from multiple games, like this one with the forced annexation. It was in Total War Three Kingdoms, I feel, with uh, Cao Cao. So, I feel like they've brought in some good stuff. As Ram says, you start in Sinai and known to sacred lands. To gain more legitimacy, expand west, conquer a sacred Egyptian land and build monument outposts. It is wise not to confront Merneptah, better to wait for old age to catch up on him. I see, so the guy who's talking in the beginning is Merneptah, so we shouldn't fight him. Probably he's strong, we should aid for, wait for him to die. Got it. Ancient legacy allows you to strive for glory by following in the footstep of the greatest rulers of the past. Once you have selected the royal tradition, you will be able to choose one ancient legacy to use in your campaign. Each one is vastly different to the others and carries the name of the ruler who has inspired it. As Ramses, choose the ancient legacy of Tutmosis the Conqueror. Use it to soften up your targets of conquest and take it over with ease so that you strengthen your reputation and legend and fulfill your destiny. Have to be honest, so far, super excited about everything I'm seeing here. I mean, this is a faction. If I play a different faction and I see half of these elements be different, if I play an Egyptian faction and half of these elements is different, I will say that it's absolutely amazing. That's okay, I'm guessing these are the usual. What do we have here? Faction effects, we have law and industry, plus 2% replenishment faction wide for one turn. 30 turns we get 350 food. 20 turns food and wood. Okay, so some starting bonuses. Raw, we are at the basic level, I guess, level one. At war with Sukkot. Records, okay. I think that's pretty much it. Destiny calls me. And I am compelled to answer. And here we have the map. It's quite large. And we could go to the north here. The uh, this I would turn the map space. like this, as I've already seen Egypt on on the map. Right, even st while studying geography. With I think this is Lower Egypt and this is Upper Egypt, if I'm not mistaken, right? Because Lower Nile, Upper Nile. Here we have Anatolia. Okay, I'll go back down. Uh, I, I don't even know, I'm so excited for this game, I don't even know exactly where to start. But we will start here with the army and the fight first. So we have Ramses here. Toggle information, okay. Let's see. Ranks. We're gonna look at this after I'll the battle. Let's start with the battle myself. here. We have some Magi Swordsmen, excellent battle speed, good defense. We have a Archers, we have a bunch of Javelin Men, I'm, and I'm guessing these are these are the Militia. Lower Egyptian Militia. Large unit size, easily tired, expandable. Easily tired, okay. And let's fight with these. Hit the part. We'll start as per usual. What do we have? Retreat, Auto Resolve. And fight the battle. And we will fight the battle. <laughs> I don't know. I I am really excited for this. It's it seems like it might be a really good game. And here we are. Just fill my cup of coffee and let's see how we start this battle. So current weather, it's dry. The weather does not affect the battlefield. Okay, so we're fighting on normal condition, nothing special. The forecast is sandstorm. So if we wait, now we get sort of a forecast of what we might get. I'm hoping that this is sort of a... Really, would I prefer it to be a chance? Not without telling me. If it would say forecast a 5% chance that this will happen, then I might gamble on it, right? Just because you want the better weather. But if it tells me exactly what's next, 
it's better than not knowing that there's a chance to get it and well am i making sense so i prefer knowing what waiting would happen i feel like an improvement would be to say there's a 10 percent chance that there will be a sandstorm at which point i might gamble to have that 10% chance to get the sandstorm and hope that it doesn't happen rather than having the current weather. I think that that, that might still be the case, but I would prefer to know about the fact that there is a chance for this to happen or not. Anyway, let's deploy our units. Greatness in battle may only be achieved through rigorous training. Even the most skillful okay, we'll we close the fundamentals for battle. I don't think we need help in battle. Maybe on the campaign map I might need it. I don't know about battles. So here are our units. Here is Ramses. Warrior of fate. A very simple look at the warriors that we have available. It's good enough for early on. I am really interested in seeing later units, you know, more veteran units, because I want those armors to look really cool. I think I can customize what I see in these flanks as well, but we're not going to worry about it at the moment. So we'll put in front our infantry, probably bring these swords. What would I want to have? I think I'll leave the swords to the side to break a flank. Yes, I like that idea, to break a flank and then uh, bring them to to charge from the back. And then we have two archers and two javelins. I'll be combining them. I think I'm going to change the order so that we have Ramses to the side here. Or to the middle. So it doesn't get fully attacked. I don't know, I'm just thinking. Abilities, what do we have? Standard shot. Every general... Takes to the field or flaming shot. The unit of bodyguards. Lord's morale. As the general. Sure. Let's push forward. No have no Let's take a quick look at our enemies here. I like the units. Very dark. I like the battlefield look as well. I don't know. This is kind of large desert lands. Seems really desolate. And really impressive at the same time. Let's just charge here. We'll charge the axes. We'll charge the bows. And we'll charge these axes as well. Let's move with the archers forward. Move Ramses as well. Maybe have Ramses target his hero. Javelins. Let's go after his archers. I am thinking let's bring our javelins here to the side. Yeah, You keep going forward. Make sure that we're capturing their archers. I am going to use these javelins to, to do a bit of flanking on these units. Okay, the range is... Like the zoom out is giving me... A weird feeling on the range. Come on, shoot at him. Yes, yes. You go forward there, you focus on these archers, please. For glory. Let's have the javelins shoot his general bodyguard in the back. You focus on these units. These flags might be just a tiny bit too big. Let me see if I can change it right now in the game. Maybe interface. UI unit banner scale. Let's take it down a notch to let's say 60%. I feel like that is good enough. You let me know See if it's visible enough breathe. for you as well. Good, we're done here. That unit is running away. You are you fighting? I think I've just engaged these javelins as well. Rather than Throw javelins at him, although there's not a whole lot there left for him. Mm, flaming arrows might help us. Let's try to bring these javelins around here as well. Oh. This lower Egyptian militia has taken a lot of damage. Let's 
Let's have the javelins. It, they move a bit different. I wonder if this is a bug or something, or maybe I'm just setting them in a way that I don't get it. And I've seen something else here. Spear in the spokes. Unit throws their javelin, trying to break the wheels of chariots, slowing it down greatly. Wow, that's a great ability. I like it. I like the Zs, showing us that this unit is doing nothing. That is really good. Oh, finally, I'm not going to forget units on the battlefield anymore. Stance, advance. Unit will start advancing towards the target location, pushing back enemy units on the way. That is also really cool. Hold. I see some improvements already, and I'm super happy with them. Mm. Great coffee works great with a new game. Get the food I don't care for, kill them now, gives us some morale, get some replenishment. Let's take the 10% replenishment. Okay, his leader is still around. Now, it's going to be... It's going to be my mission to go forward. I mean, I think we're at war with this entire faction, right? Yes. So we are at war with the Azati, and these are their territories. Okay, we will have to check on diplomacy here in a second. But for now, on this battle, we've gained common medium armor, melee defense 10%, recruit ledger, workforce cost in this region minus 2. Okay, the battle reports is showing us who we killed, good, decisive characters, affairs, general has leveled up. Okay, well, let's take a look at him. Where are we at? They can high flaming shot. Yeah, we know about this. Shoot while moving. Okay, that's good to know. These are all the effects that are being applied. Pharaoh's crown. Crowns will become available as you unlock them in the power of the crown panel. Great. We have light armor and we can change it. It changes the unit type. So... From fatigue build up minus 5% with the light armor, we could get ourselves the common medium armor. A leather cuirass? cuirass has more than a good chance of protecting the stomach and chest, even from direct strikes from a sword, spear, axe, or missile. Man, we can, we can change the units around, I think, by a lot. I am going to go medium armor, even though it reduces, it reduces my melee defense by 1 and speed by 5. But I feel like it's very important for our archers to be protected. Does it change the character as well? Yeah, that would have been too much. I would, <laughs> that, would, that would be an RPG at that point. Magi Bow, we get 15% reload speed and Grand's attribute shoot while moving. Great. And then we have this with the Recruit Ledger. Its effects will be applied on your next turn. Okay, so uh, you can change things around, but you will be getting them during the next turn. Assign titles here, skill points 1, what's this? Presence, the effect of your overwhelming presence over others, fear, respect and uncompromising power of will. You can benevolate the minds and hearts of those around you who, can, who see you second only to the gods. Fortitude, the ability to take care of others so that they may take care of you. Living to fight another day is more important than burning out in a blaze of glory. <laughs> Very interesting. And Ardor, there is no better time than the present. The willingness to act is more important than any debate or any consideration of security or vanity. You'll have time enough to sleep when you're dead. Yes, I know that. That's also a quote from a coffee poster that I love. Coffee, you can sleep with when you're dead. So, presence, fortitude, and ardor. What do we get here? From presence, we get less upkeep for our units. So, this is sort of the commander ability, I believe, right? We have in other games commander abilities. Because... 
This reduces upkeep, offers us influence, grants the ability do you know who you're fighting, reduces the morale of enemies, and then prevents rebellions in the province. More morale, so this is sort of what I'm thinking it's happening here, right? It's sort of a commander. Fortitude should do what? Replenishes troops, gives us melee defense, gives us shields up, which once again is very good for unit defense. Overall, we're getting replenishment, build up fatigue reduction, melee defense, recruitment slots, and protection ability. Okay, and finally, our door here. We are getting movements on the campaign map with charge bonus, with an even with an ability which increases charge and the speed of all units, okay. And finally enables night battles. Okay, it's gonna take a while for me to figure this entire thing. And figure out the best way forward. I would like to get some influence. I think I prefer replenishments over influence though. So let me go up to this point. What is the charge? Charge is 20. So if we would get a 24 that is pretty good. But let's get this one. I am going to go here with presents. Are these the some of the things? This... These seem to be things that we are getting, so items I'm guessing, titles that we are getting by combining different rates and specializing. Okay, so what do we get here at free? First among Shardana, recruit rank plus two, that's good. Grants the attribute Vanguard deployment, that's also really good. If we get free to our door, no, to presence, we would get shield of the Magi, melee defense plus 8, recruitment rank plus 2, but this will make him... I'm guessing that this will make him a melee warrior? If I put the shield here, does it remove the bow? Well, one way to find out. Let's get these both. Let's see, can I take both of these? No, one title available at a time. I see. Okay, so one title available at a time and then we get at rank 8. It doesn't actually give me a shield, it's just called the Shield of the Magi. Well, I'll take the... I will take, once again, the presents, but instead of getting this melee defense, I will get the recruitment rank and vanguard deployment. Do I? Uh, I know it's good in the Memnon campaign, but let's take the melee defense. Why not? Whew, so, so many things to do here. Character details. Okay, so that's just the button there. Stances, what do we have? We have the March stance. Where it's said that we are not really getting tired if we are attacking, right? Ambush, raiding, encampment. Well, let me let me go forward here. Apparently, I cannot. Your army can only sack or raise a constructed outpost. Pressing on. Okay, so we're gonna have to probably attack this region here. If I go and go in an encampment stance, can I recruit here. troops? Doesn't seem like that is the case. We'll probably have to recruit troops here. Blessed by the gods. Okay, how many troops do they have in this outpost? Five units? I, am I believe we can take them on. So I'm to going to attack even battle. though it might be a mistake. Canaan will yield. They're not giving us the best of chances. In circle, retreat, auto resolve, we'll fight the battle. And let's just see what this outpost battle means.
I see some signs here, but I don't know. That seems like a tower or a center. That I don't know exactly what it is. Okay, normal weather, we'll start with this. So this is the fight, this is the settlement. To storm the settlement. Study the enemy position well. Follow. Okay. So we have an entrance here. I do like how the battle map, like you can deploy all around. And there do seem to be multiple ways in. So far I enjoy the way that the map works. This tower, this is the main tower, fires arrow on nearby enemies, even the capture point for the tower. Victory points return under the control of the defending faction if left unguarded. I see, so you always want to guard them. Resources up here, which would increase morale for the units who have it under control. Okay, I wonder and I'm hoping that this is influenced by the buildings that you have probably in the area. Let's see, if I take a look at the tactical map. I am thinking of going through the north as here it's sort of an uphill battle. There's also mud here, but I would prefer to go from uphill. I'm going to take two archers. And I am going to take two, probably two infantry units to go here, capture these resources. And then I'm going to take the rest of them and we're going to try to attack from this side as well. I might even do something a bit weird. Ah, weird is not the right word. But basically I'm taking one unit with one javelin here. I'll take another unit from this side with one javelin just so I can meet them here and do some sort of flanking move. Your generals have their own unique skills and advantages. Yeah. Pay close attention Let's bring to them together and here. Be ready to unleash their abilities on the enemy We're gonna go and attack this time. unit. I think splitting them up was probably the best way forward. It shows us two weathers. I wonder whether there's a chance that the weather might change during the battle. Defenses. Let's see, as advisor, option... Minimal. This power. Launch tablets. Okay, so far so good. Let's bring the javelins around here so that we can have a good show of force here. Probably should be focusing on these guys though. Right? No, let's break the archers first. Great, we have broken them here. Let's go capture the resources. Okay, let's focus then on the general. That unit has been broken. Now let's force some damage on these ones. Oof. We're losing currently. There is armor in this battle. Uh, actually, in any battle, there is armor. And you can actually break it down for them. Uh, a certain amount, a certain percentage of armor, generally speaking can be broken which is an interesting way to push a mechanic here where thunder armor could be useful and something an effect that lasts throughout the battle i am going to try to take one unit but apparently i cannot take a unit and avoid battle there okay Oof. We're gonna lose some of these units actually. Let's see if I can retreat and maybe save them. Have the javelins actually do some work here. As commanded. Never back down. We're almost out of ammunition, so I'm thinking I could even rush them. Yeah, let's just quickly charge them here. Hey, that unit is out. This unit is returning. 
I will speed things up. Your troops have grown weird. Now, let me see, actually, before we speed it up, how does the battle look? Oh, have you seen that guy getting kicked? Okay, so there are some good parts of this animation. Nice. Well, we'll end the battle. I like the fact that it gives you all of these areas. It conquered them directly in a way that we are not taking any extra damage from the towers or from the buildings, from the settlement, while we are trying to do some cleanup. I like that idea. Generally speaking, we have lost some units in, in that process. Let's see, what else do we have? Going on for us. The gods guide me to victory. Occupation. It would give us two idle workforces, some province instability and conquest penalty. We can loot and occupy, which would increase the penalties, get a bunch of replenishment, get less workforce, sack or race. We'll do occupation for now. Egypt is peace. Egypt is civilized. Do you not want to be peaceful and civilized? I have earned this city. Sure. Sacred land has been occupied. The gods have blessed me. The land of North Sinai. We've got another medium armor. A new ancillary. Uncommon ancillary chance 5%. Purveyor of scavenge good. Okay. It's a weird ancillary, but there you go. And recruitment ledger, which we've seen before. So with that in mind... Ah, okay, so I'm guessing that this is at the beginning of the game. Destiny and now we have some building command. slots. Enemy outpost site. So this is related to this region and these are outposts of the region. Settlement. So Nebgehes, which we do have. Nekel, which produces bronze. Sukkot, which is a food settlement. And then there's Azati over here, which we will be getting. It's also a food settlement. So these are buildings for the settlements. But then, if every region has outposts... Okay, getting a bit complicated. I, I feel like we shall see how it feels later on. Definitely a lot of management to do. Sacred lands. Sacred Egyptian land. This settlement is sacred Egyptian land. Owning it will increase your legitimacy in the Egyptian court. Okay, so we'll take another look at Ramses first. I will go with level 4 here, as I do want to get some influence going. And this is one trait, I'm guessing. Ambitious content trait pair. Ambitious gain by spending the turn in March stance or suffering attrition casualties. Your general is predisposed to this trait. Okay. Content. Gain by ending turns in the encampment stance. Ah. Oh. As you can see. So there's a bar here. So we're going to more towards ambitious at the moment. XP per turn 35. Then we would get the upgrade at 75, 125. And, or we could get content, which gives us more replenishments. This is really something cool. I do like the direction in which they're going. I'm not going to go through all of these at the moment because, yeah, it, you know, it's a bit too much. So background is begotten by the sun gun. That's why we started with presence plus two and ardor plus three. Okay. Well, with this going... Let us take a look at the buildings, right? We'll start with the region first. We started with Nomark's office, the basic building, and the capital. This is the capital city. Okay. And then we have Magi office, good for recruitment. Sheridan barracks, this is giving us javelins. The next level of Sheridan headquarters would give us swords and spears. Then we have wheat fields. Woodcutting yards. And we can take a look here at buildings. Oof. Man, there's so much information here. Tax collector's office. 
increases production for all resources. Holds of Records gives us influence. Monument of Greatness, Legitimacy plus 12 and a few victory points, that's the important thing, the rest are bonuses. That we're... It's sort of like a wonder, look at the amount of resources, it costs 5,000 stone, 5,000 gold, 1,250 wood and 7 workforce, so this is sort of a wonder, as we have in Age of Empires. Okay, Midwife House, Workforce, Growth, Replenishment, Movement on Land... Recruitment halls, recruitment ranks, siege, ammunition, morale. Then we have the recruitment of different units and chariots. Grain posts, bonuses to the different resources. <laughs> this is just one region. A fig farm. Woodcutter districts. Ah, I see. So this region offers us at least these two basic resource building wood and food i do wonder if it's on all regions but we do have that here we have a bronze furnace and bronze proving hall okay so as far as building in the other region senate house for happiness it's sort of like a bar and game it's an inn actually a bit more i think that would be the right word for it water well for growth influence then Champions Hall for XP per turn to own armies in this province. More bronze, bronze works district, bronze income 155. But what I see here at the moment, I see the production, I don't see influence yet. And how does that affect things? Okay, what else do we have? So these are ruined fishing posts, definitely want to repair these. We will try to get some food going, we're only producing 237 and we're gonna recruit a lot more units. And in this food place we have smugglers market, food income during collapse, crisis and prosperity. Okay. Interesting. But it reduces happiness and influence, not affected by income modifying effects. Hmm. Very interesting. Seems like a remor emergency sort of situation. Okay. We, we can't really build too much more, mostly because it requires workforce, which at this moment we have only three. Three more. What is this? Happiness is at... It's between 40 and 60, which gives us workforce growth. Two units of idle workforce, zero happiness. Unemployment might cause a happiness penalty, maybe. Influence 60, between 60 and 80. Strong grip, if not stone steady, strive for more. And rush rhine, which gives us melee defense on recruitment, plus one, and workforce growth. Okay, so there are bonuses to happiness. It even shows us here. Great. Influence is the amount of resources. So 60 to 80, we're actually producing the normal amount of resources. And we only get a 10% bonus once we are over 80. Okay, good to know. Yeah, and workforce, the more people you have idle, the more unhappiness goes down. You get more recruitment slots as there is a lot of unemployment. Okay. And if zero are unemployed they get happiness. I see. So keep people busy overall. Recruit the general, building browser, the whole thing. Yeah, it's already too much. <laughs> I feel like there's so much information. And if I take a look here, military app outpost, Egyptian fort, Egyptian lookout, Egyptian way station to rest and replenish movement, Egyptian trading post, increases production in the region, and the Shrine of Ra. And we already have an Egyptian way station here and the Shrine of Ra. This cannot be upgraded. And then what I want to do is take a look at the buildings. Although it's nighttime, it's getting to daytime. Because I want to see here. This is the Shrine. 
Okay. Okay, I can't really tell a whole lot between this building. It seems pretty much the same. I hope graphics change though. Religious outpost, economic, administrative, and military. Okay. Well, Egypt's I've glory. done some building. Let's see if I could get some recruits. We have native units here, the militia and the archers, and we could get some magi, swordsmen, chargers. I do like the chargers. Armor piercing, excellent battle speed, archers and raiders. So what do we have? We have two javelins. I would stay with another unit of archers as well. I would like to give in some chargers, but let's bring in a bunch of shielded warriors. We only have two recruitment slots, so we'll start with the swords first. We we'll have a line infantry. We're in the season of Aket, Flood. Movement at sea 30%, food 35% from fisheries on the Nile. Different effects depending on the year or the time of the year. Is there anything else here? So this is because this is a sacred region. Let's see, workforce growth, happiness, influence, the usual. I wonder if I should build anything else here. Or if I should just keep still for now. I think I'm just going to keep some resources. We're not losing on anything just yet. Victory objectives. Victory objectives measure your accomplishment in the face of the people of the world. They are divided into conquest, landmarks, ambition, and feats of rule. Beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. Don't just conquer the world map. Have different goals. Great. Super happy with that. Minor victory, major victory, ultimate victory. Homeland, so we need to have these first. And then we'll get to the others. So for now we're just gonna conquer North Shinai and then we'll take a look at other objectives. Royal decrees. <laughs> There's a search bar. Hopefully Diablo 4 is learning from this. But man, this is starting to be really crazy. There's definitely a lot of complexity here. And where do we start from? Okay, so we'll start here from the middle. We could either get plus 3 to happiness in the capital province, we could get plus 1 to influence, or we could get some XP per turn. The life of the soldier sounds great to me. 50 experience per turn will just make our troops a bit more survivable, and then we'll go for the heart of Egypt. Let's see. The life of the soldier. The cost of military training should not be counted in time or materials. Ensure each soldier has access to advice and lessons from the veterans of previous conflicts. Blue is civic, yellow is economy, and red is military, okay. So those are the signs that we have on the map, on the Royal Decree map. Diplomacy. Kemet is under my protection. Okay. This guy has a lot of strength, of course. He's friendly towards us. So we're friends here. We're not going to declare war or anything. It seems like we have pretty much the same system we've seen before. Either in Total War Troy and hopefully there's a bit of complexity that we've seen in something like Free Kingdoms as well as I really loved that one. Okay, we'll leave the negotiations at the moment aside. Local deities. Choose up to three gods to worship, build shrines and temples to them, gain their effect in battle and campaign. Okay, faction leader. Destined for faction summary, we already know about it. Fourth power of crown, ancient legacies. These are bonuses, this is the map. Uh, sure, I'll keep the map open for now. A reminder, settlement upgrade... Outpost construction available. And I do wonder whether I should build something here. Let's see. If I go to Sukkot. Have a Shrine of Ra could help. Especially with some groove. 
Egyptian trading post could also help as it does give us in this region 10% more resources. And the lookout post. I feel like we should be protecting the area right from invaders. This building provides garrison. We might not have any uh, from the sea at the moment, but we will. For now, I'm just going to throw in another Egyptian trading post here for the extra resources. It doesn't cost us a whole lot. What about this? So the military outpost right now. Each holdout town time. I think I prefer it from here. Yeah, this one provides us with a bit more because it provides us with some garrison. Allow an army to exchange units. Army units from fort will reinforce the region settlement during siege. Okay, so if we station someone, they will reinforce. The highest ranked unit in the fort will be the leading general when in battle. Interact with an outpost will refund 50% of the movement spent to reach it. 200 stone. While this one all provides us Three clubmen. Yeah, I don't know. I will not build anything for now. Let's see. And the turn. Well, this has been a very long first turn. Sh super long first turn. New, new victory objective. So now we get... Let's see, where is the objective? Does it give us... Yes, it showed us from the conquest what else we need to do. Foreign lands to conquest call center to be built. Or have as many as possible to get as many victory points as possible to get closer to the minor victory points as possible. Okay. Okay, good to know. Well, I will put a break right now into this episode as I want to upload this as quickly as possible, just to give you something to watch until I record the next one. The next one is coming up as soon as it can, right? We'll start recording, we'll be uploading it as quickly as I can. With this in mind, hope you're enjoying it. And if you have any thoughts and ideas, leave them down in the comments below. We shall share between each other. And until the next episode, I wish you all to have a wonderful day.